In the past, God has spoken to our ancestors through the prophets at times and in various ways, but these days he has spoken to us by his son, whom appointed heir of all things and through whom also he has made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Okay, so this pa the, during the past week we have celebrated Passover. And Passover is a celebration of how God rescued us by passing a plague through our enemies and it told us exactly how to protect our homes from the plague. To ensure that our ancestors then would not be harmed. That the plague would pass over those houses without harm. Thus, it's called Passover. And it's celebrated with specific bitter herbs and a specific meal that we go by in to celebrate how God spared us from his wrath because we were the faithful. That is the celebration that Jesus Christ was at with the Last Supper. Now, what, what makes this time that we're celebrating so exciting is that unlike Christmas, there is no documentation and it, there's questions around the birth of Jesus Christ. Then there are not very many questions around the the actual existence of Jesus Christ because of the events that happened from that Passover supper on Thursday through the events that happened through Friday into Saturday. There are no questions about that. It is documented. There, they, there is a person called Jesus Christ who was born in, in Galilee. The whole bit, it, it is all recorded right there. And th this is one of the things that I think is so exciting about Easter time is that we're celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ is now documented. He, he becomes a part of history. It means that our faith was well put. Not that we did, had a question about it to begin with, but it is the assurance that the documentation as we are flesh and blood human beings it is the documentation that actually do, that confirms it. So, Pontius Pilate was, was, was a real man on Friday who condemned Jesus Christ to death. Now, I, I, I go, through, go, go through this just about every year. Um, because Pilate did not want to condemn Jesus to death. In fact, he wanted the people to vote for Barabbas. 
that's why he washed his hands of this situation. This symbolic washing of the hands meant that you decided and I wanted something else. Barabbas was more the was was a known criminal. He was known for a criminal acts. The people were there. There are there are some theories about how the how the 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 vote actually came down and how it in how the crowd because it was a mop vote and how it all happened that the Pharisees planted people in to to entice people to scream when Jesus Christ was presented so that he would would be the condemned one the Jesus the, the disciples uh, they may have tried to entice the crowd to speak for Barabbas Either way, the vote was that Barabbas would, would be spared and that Jesus Christ was to be condemned to crucifixion and hung until he was dead on the cross. Now, uh, crucifixion w- was um, the, a very known way of executing a person. And... It has it, it's if we were to run an autopsy on somebody who was crucified, we'd find some very specific things that actually happens while they're they're hanging up there on the cross because you're hanging with your arms extended, and there's certain organs that are deprived of oxygen and begin to shut down because. They can no longer receive oxygenated blood. Not exactly a present way to go, and it's a very slow process. Not not as quick as and easy as. Uh, oh, I crucified him. There's a lot, lot to that. Very painful way to go. Thus, the conversations that happen between. The two others who were crucified next to Jesus. Here's here it is in uh, is um, what does start to be questioned. Question is who actually when Je- who actually received Jesus' body when. Um, he was taken down from the cross that the one thought was the this specific grave was a grave that was for a prominent family in the area that was sympathetic to two Christians and sympathetic to the teachings of, of uh, Jesus Christ thus they offered up their grave for Jesus' body to to be taken into. The f- and it had to have been somebody with wealth because of the size of the grave, not that they, and wasn't it just a simple hole dug? So the there's other questions about if it was Mary. Um, Jesus' mother was there, or Mary Magdalene. There's a whole lot of lot of questions around that. But the what it, what is actually known, and what we do need to keep in mind is he was taken from the cross, carried to a donated grave. His body was prepared in much the same fashion of. Um, in Judaism, the traditions at the time with shrouds, herbs, and anointments, certain oils and things like that. 
in order to one keep the smell down to uh, pres uh, preservation of the body and things so that was done and that of course was done over Saturday and then of course when people woke up the stone to the to the grave was moved and Jesus was no longer there At first, the word was on the very first um, Easter morning was that the body had been stolen. People thought or passing stories around of, of, of a grave robber that they went in and they stole the body. That they took the body from the grave and those who were faithful and sympathetic to Jesus Christ were now at the point of pleading for the bodies to be returned. It wasn't just like, bam, oh my God, he rose from the dead. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't quite, quite that. It was who stole our our teacher, our rabbi's body. We want it back. It was a desecration. And it wasn't until more things happened that they discovered that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. That he had returned from death as promised in the prophecies that the that he had come back from death opening the way for forgiveness of sins and for us to have salvation towards being able to be with God our Creator and Father. In another another writing, where, um, we we get, we come to the the the, the term, the saying, uh, doubting Thomas, where Thomas actually would he was still stuck on the idea that someone had stolen his teacher's body. That he had stolen the body of someone that he loved and had been following. Someone that he had been preaching about the love that God has for us. That someone stole that body. And it wasn't until he touched the wounds that were left from the crucifixion. That he finally believed. That leads me to one of my favorite sayings. And it is. Believing is seeing. Think about that. Believing is seeing. Not until you open your heart. Put your faith in something. Will you be able to see it? And that was what the real, really big message of Jesus Christ coming. There's there's a lot of messages. And that was like the, the a huge message, at least to, to the way I see it, that that was a huge message because when you get to that get to that point where you see that everything was in every person every being is was was created by God for the sole purpose of love that 
it changes how you see a lot of things. It affects the respect, the honor that you will give all things. It affects the amount of love and gratitude and positivity that actually pours into your heart because you can see it because you opened your heart and you believed it. You opened your heart and you believed it. When you do that, when you open your heart and you believe it, everything else follows. The rest of your body follows. From there, you find tolerance for people because everybody needs to find their path to God. It isn't it isn't a, just a soul path. Everybody has their own journey. There are things that you have to experience as that being that God loves. And God doesn't want us to find him because of, oh, you'll burn in hell if you don't believe. Although with the commandments, he does tell you, specifically tell you that he is a jealous God and that you should have no others before him. The, the, the commandments are placed in a way that we need to freely believe them Freely follow them. We know they're there. That's the whole point. We got to know they're there. We know they're there. But to truly follow them, we have to open our hearts and place our total faith into the vision that is there. The vision that there is love surrounding us at all times. That God loves us so much that he won't let anything happen to us. That we can walk through dangers and be protected. That we will find that path through the flames, the drowning waters, the collapsing rocks, whatever the calamity may be, that we will find our way through. Because we have put our faith, our everything, our being, so totally into God's hands that we find our way through. It isn't really all that mystic, but it is definitely a beautiful thing that you see nothing but beauty from all sides. When you see things like war happen, that you know what it is, it's a few handfuls of politicians on either side that the people themselves just want to be able to live feed their families take their kids to school have a home that they can call their own We'd all seem to want those things, right? Simple things. Not the... Things that we, that, that we, that we see remarketed to us on Google. Not the big ads that we find on TV. No. Simple things. Just to be able to love our family and have those people who we love and who we choose to love to be around us.
we should pray about that. And when we pray about this, that we should be grateful for those who are with us, that we do love, that accept us just for who we are. Because God placed them there. God, thank you for all the love that you have poured into us. Thank you for everything that you have done to us, that you have opened our hearts, filled our, filled us with love, a love that, that we can spill, they can spill over and out of us into all those who surround us. They, a type of love that will never die. And you've placed it through the center of you. Of, of our universe and all around us. We thank you for that. We thank you for the ability to believe so that we can always see you. That we can always see the miracles that are around us that you have created. No matter how large or small they may be. We thank you for this time the uh, time of year to celebrate one celebrate that you that you allow the plague to pass over over our ancestors in ways that they were not harmed that they not, did not become sick because they believed we thank you for our ability to believe and to believe so that we can see. Thank you for that ability to believe and see. Thank you for your son. Thank you for him washing away our sins. With the love that you provided. Amen.